Hidden for nearly 15,000 years, there's a new discovery that's changing what we think we know about how the Americas were settled. So there's this team at Florida State University that uh, discovered stone tools alongside mastodon bones. That means they found the oldest known site of human life in the southeastern U.S. Consider that. Think about it for just a second. Before the Out of Africa theory, or should I say the Out of Africa hypothesis, people knew that everyone came from the land that they were placed upon by the Great Spirit. Before religion was used for colonization, most ancient societies believed in four races of man. Now, I should point out, there are many more but the rest are just admixtures of the four basic races that all evolve independently in their own unique part of the world. Just to keep it simple for you, they all had their own Adam and Eve. The concept of everyone descending from one common ancestor is relatively new to the world in comparison to the history of man, yet the Out of Africa theory is consistently taught to us throughout grade school, consistently regurgitated, propagandized like a weapon against the people, even though it has more holes in it than a rice strainer. Everything, and I mean everything, that you've learned from these compulsory slash Rockefeller institutions, it's all false knowledge based off of fake pseudoscience and the concepts of eugenics. So you have to unlearn the indoctrination so that you could see the truth. Number one, you got to understand, all so-called black people do not come from Africa. And Africa is not the only place in the world that is occupied by so-called black people. Meet Donald Johansson, founder and director of the Institute of Human Origins at Arizona State University. He is best known as the man who discovered Lucy. In 1974, while walking along a hillside in Ethiopia, the great doctor stumbled upon a three million year old elbow bone. After returning with his team, so that he could take a closer look, they were able to pull out over 400 different bone fragments in which he constructed himself into a partial human skeleton. With no hands, feet, or knees, and less than 30% of the skull, it should make you wonder, how was he able to come up with this surprisingly human-like creature? How do you go from a pile of bone fragments to a skeleton to supposedly the holy grail of human evolution, the find of a lifetime, a three million year old intermediate species that just so happens to support Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin, if he were alive today, would probably be very happy with this poster. I want you to support science and reason. So get God's name off the money that we all worship and get in science we trust. Every theory or hypothesis has the ability to make predictions. These predictions is what you should find later in the future that would support your hypothesis. If Darwin's theory of evolution was correct, we should find intermediate species showing a clear transition between one species to another meaning we should literally find millions of half-human, half-ape-like creatures. But not only humans, we should find this transition between many different species. This is the reason why Johansson and his beloved Pan-Africans love to pretend as if he found 400 different Australopithecine specimens when it was actually just 400 different bone fragments. 
and about a third of them were tea. And less than a dozen of them were actually parts of a skull. The truth is, after decades of digging, this is pretty much all that he found. I don't know why that seemingly intelligent people, when it comes down to this specific issue, seems to lack common sense. Even Darwin seen this as an issue with his own hypothesis. Quoting, by my theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed. Why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the earth? Hmm. Well, as for Johansson, he was just a phony. And Lucy, well, she was just an ape. Well, if you go to the Creation Museum, there she is. She's a four-legged walking quadrupedal knuckle walker because of Dr. Ham. I don't know what he got his doctorate in, but it may have been one of those things you get at Sears. Um, but there ain't no way that Lucy was walking on her knuckles. Let's take a closer look at what this really means. It means that only the strong survive and that through time, certain species adapt certain abilities that allow them to evolve along with the planet. Even if that ability is the ability to commit cultural genocide upon another race of people in an effort to speed up evolution. But we'll get back to that. People may debate over the concepts of Darwin's theory, but one thing that is crystal clear, and that is his theory was based on a racial bias and the concepts of a superior race, and was used scientifically to justify genocide. Um, John Wesley Howell in 1789, again, this is, uh, this is the, I'm sorry, Powell, this is the director um, of uh, the Bureau of Ethnology at the Smithsonian Institute. He said this, um, artifacts found prior to Christopher Columbus's arrival would be considered illegitimate by the Smithsonian. Um, only the savage Indian culture would be observed and this created the artificial bar barrier to science. Only the savage. Science was colluding with government because of commerce and religion was involved. Now, why do I tell you all this stuff? Not because I'm an Indian expert or anything else. You've got to do your own homework. I, I just found out about this stuff. I'm amazed by it. I don't know what the answer is on this. The reason why I bring it up is the stock is not bad. The soup went bad. The Chinese Academy of Sciences and Peking University have jointly announced an archaeological find near Chongzuo City in Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. The discovery is the fossilized lower jawbone of a modern man. The find provides evidence to support the theory that modern humans did not only evolve in Africa, but in multiple regions around the world. Uh, it's almost universal of ancient civilizations. It may be. What we now see is the six cradles of civilization very soon will expand to at least seven and possibly more. We've been taught so little in school about the history of humanity and academics have a tendency to not talk to indigenous people about their own history. They think they made their stories up about where their ancestors came from. Even the BBC is talking about it in documentaries. Uh, the, the, the History Channel is talking about it. National Geographic have done a whole piece on it. They've even went to some of the descendants in Argentina of the original black people who was in the hemisphere before the Mongolians came. What they try to say is we came from Australia, which is, it's possible. Why, why are they saying there that the natives have made it if most of the tribal uh, people that are being asked are denying any involvement in the mounds themselves. Uh, I've, I've never quite understood that, Jake. <laughs> uh, even when, when I was taking anthropology and archaeology courses and, uh, and, and doing my graduate studies, and I, I was just floored at how 
few or, or how little uh, the oral tradition of the native people was even considered as a valid source uh, for you know explaining archaeological finds or artifacts or you know, any, anything that was discovered by academia. Um, I was actually I was actually told by my professor that the native oral tradition uh, doesn't hold any weight. And you don't see much American anthropology and archaeological work because everything they dig up is black, so it's kept very hidden here in America. Um, so I know who I am. When I was a child, my grandfather used to take me to visit the different burial grounds and mounds because our people buried themselves in mounds in the woods of Oak Hill down in South Carolina. I thought that was absolutely normal. It wasn't until I left the woods and the farms where I grew up that I found people who rejected ownership of being here before the slave ship. They thought that was a cop-out on being African, especially as the 60s went on. And so I would say little about it. But anybody looking at my face can see who I am. Now I just want to digress for one second here about a very interesting story that came up this year that involved the Y chromosome. And that is the discovery of a very rare and ancient Y chromosome that didn't fit into the known picture of Y chromosome diversity. Well, this particular lineage was discovered in an African American man from South Carolina who happened to submit this DNA to uh, the National Geographic Geographic Project, which sees thousands and thousands of samples. It was very unusual, did not fit on the tree. Well, so just to update where we stand today, now we have to add another admixture process in, in Africa, along with the two outside of Africa. The history that has been erased in our nation, and in particular with the Native Americans, happened because it didn't fit the story they created, Manifest Destiny. It only works when Indians were savages, and they had to have savages for commerce and government to expand. The ancient artifacts prove otherwise. Why aren't we looking into them? Australian Aboriginals. They are a diverse group of Negroid looking people that have been occupying the continent of Australia and all of its specific islands that surrounds it, grouped into one large nation called Oceania. There are many different types of Aboriginals, but one thing that is consistent among them is the fact that they are Negroes, or are considered to be Negroid people, meaning brown or copper colored toned people, since no one is really black. Prior to the 1800s, the Aborigine Americans and Oceanians was grouped into one race of people by Europeans called Indians. concept of black indigenous people have been kept secret, wiped from the minds and history of black Americans. The only native people or indigenous people that we are taught about are South Africans, the Khoi. But there are many different indigenous people in Oceania that is not connected to Africa, genetically nor culturally. And what I mean by that is, just like Albert Perry, the South Carolina so-called African-American man, they contain DNA shared with no one else on the planet. These are the people that are most commonly called cannibal, head-hunting savages point in history, the ancestors of the Melanesians mated with this extinct humanoid. This unknown species is most likely not Neanderthals or Denisovans, but another type of humanoid. No fossils have ever been found of this humanoid. over a third of the Earth's surface and is larger than all the other land masses in the world combined. 
This 160 million square kilometer expanse is dotted with thousands of tiny islands. Captain Cook, sailing around the region in the 17th century, found them all inhabited. And these people shared languages, cultures, and a love of navigation. It spread thousands of miles across open ocean. The Polynesians are history's greatest navigators. So, Father Ratu Luke, his two sons, Naivindi and Rapopo, set out through the sleepy village to get sick on the shallow water. They will catch the fish with spears. Watch Father Ratu Luke. He knows how to walk quietly in the water and just where to find the fish. You have to know how to use the spear, or there may be no breakfast. There. Ah, father has a nice one. Meanwhile, women do their part in getting food. Fresh roots are part of the breakfast. So mother Devara and a neighbor woman dig roots of tapioca from the village garden at the edge of the jungle. Her daughter, Davila, picks leaves of the breadfruit tree that will serve for breakfast dishes. The out of Africa theory, which has a mainstream acceptance, is still only just that, a theory. No one can claim for sure what happened exactly, and the most confusing bunch of all seem to be the Australian Aboriginal people. They've been on this remote island, Australia, for about 40,000 years. We know this because their tools and skeletal remains go back to around 40 to 50,000 years at least. And yet what's really confusing is that the continent of Australia has always been extremely inaccessible. It's been an island for millions of years. The million dollar question then is how on earth these guys ended up there? It doesn't seem to make any sense. It seems to defy logic and rationale. How could a primitive people end up making one of the most monumental journeys in human history? Well, this very question has miffed anthropologists for decades and to this day, there's really no adequate explanation. The currently accepted out of Africa theory is the only known candidate. Now, but there are a few problems with this pattern. Firstly, the Aboriginals are very genetically isolated. What that means is they don't seem to have mixed much with any other group on the planet. That means this initial part of the journey here has doubts cast over it. But where things get really confusing is this part of the journey here. At some point, these ancient people had to cross a swathe of the ocean. This would have been a monumental task, the first of its kind ever to be attempted by man. There are a few problems with this. The Aboriginals, being a fairly primitive society, showed no signs of weaving in their culture, so that does away with any possibility of having sails. Secondly, of course, they had no means of navigation, no clue that Australia even existed, so they were essentially travelling blind. And perhaps the biggest blow is that there was no archaeological evidence of boats. Even to this day, the Aboriginals build sometimes wooden rafts and canoes, but nothing that is capable of making such a voyage. All of these cast doubts as to how they managed to make this initial crossing of the ocean all those millennia ago. If we look at the genetic evidence, the archaeological evidence and the behavioural evidence, it seems to give us a lot of problems. Archaeologically, as mentioned, the lack of boats and lack of any sophisticated technology makes this all the more unlikely. The fact that they're so genetically isolated also leaves us scratching our heads. But also behaviorally, if they did make this fantastic sea journey, you would expect the Aboriginals to travel further afield and try and repeat this feat. It seemed though that they were content after reaching Australia to live essentially back in the Stone Age as hunter-gatherers and never again try to scale swathes of the sea and explore new lands. From these three points, they seem to point against the possibility that the Aboriginals ever made this journey in the first place. Now, we can't say that they disprove the out of Africa theory altogether, but what they do provide is some evidence that the story is not as simple as we once thought. In fact, they have quite a few surprises up their sleeve and some quite surprising genetic links that you wouldn't really expect. For example, they have links to the Native Americans as well as the Indians. Could it be that there's a piece of the puzzle that we're basically missing? Now, if we ask the Aboriginals themselves, their own mythology just complicates matters further. It's awash with lost continents and floods, but that's a story for another time.
When the explorers first came to America, they claimed the Indians were savages. Well, all the Aborigines are deemed as savages. Then they take the culture and they reverse it, meaning every part of the culture will be declared wicked or pagan by the missionaries. Even the musical instruments. The objective of the missionaries is to extract the resources of the island or lands, meaning the marine life, the game, the agriculture, but most important, to upset or unbalance the ecosystem. Then they enslave the indigenous population and force them to participate in the destruction of their own land. How humiliating. This is done using a process called colonization, which is so-called black Americans' current situation. We just woke up in a system with no history or knowledge of self with only a colonizer to teach us. Now the net is ready. Rapopo and his friends help the men carry the net to the water. They wade in and form a long curving line far out from shore, holding the net down in the shallow water of the lagoon. The horrible demonization of the indigenous populations lie in contrast to what earlier explorers wrote about them in their diaries one European observer wrote, generosity seems to be so fundamental to the blacks that they do not seem to have a word for thank you. They do not understand the concept of extreme wealth or poverty. They are also not able to understand the invader ideal of equality and that freedom and rights are negotiated among elites. You know, the how can that Negro speak for me mentality. One Australian Aborigine wrote to the colonial officials in 1841, our nation owns no chief, literally a pure democracy. Another European observer wrote that the Aborigines don't seem to understand exerted rank. In fact, it is difficult to get into a black fellow's head that one man is higher than another. Why is all of this important? It's important because you must understand the history and culture of the Australian Aborigines. I mean, just the fact that they do not connect back to Africa and that they are Negroes that claim to be from the land of Australia part of the land, never lived anywhere else, and that there's no anthropological or DNA proof of them being connected to Africa. To understand this is very important to understanding the history of the American Negro. Now the feast is ready, and the fathers and mothers eat while the girls serve them. Nearby, Rapopo and his friends beat the rhythm for a special dance. It is a Fiji girls dance. They dance seated on the ground, clapping their hands. This is a happy day, a day to remember. There were plenty of fish in the net. There was excitement in the fishing. And now with the feast and dance, Davila and Rapopo their friends, their parents, and all the fishermen have a good time on their peaceful island far across the Pacific Ocean. The others are Siberian, so we're going to come to this. All right, let's do the next one. Which one's of Native American ancestry and which one is of Han Chinese ancestry? And the Han ethnic group is the dominant ethnic group in China. 
I don't. I'm going to say that the, the one on the right is um, the Han Chinese ancestry, but the, I'm not too sure. The one on the right is Han? Yeah. What do you say, bro? What did you come to? Left Native American. Left Native American? Right. Is that what you say? The right is Chinese? Yeah? What's that? The top one is Native American? Okay, so listen. Yeah, it's a real subtle difference, right? Is that what you said? The top one is Chinese. Top one is Chinese? Yeah. Dude, killing it. All right, but you're wrong. But notice, right, how it comes this way. But so Siberian, in the one, three of those slides are from, those photos are people right here, and one is people right here. So one is American, got it? One is Asian slash, but it's really in kind of European because they're Russian, because Mongolia and Siberia, or Siberia is part of Russia, and they're really Siberian. And Russia is a European country. And so you could argue that all those folks are European because they're Russia, they're Russian. Got it? You see how like the complexity of this? So, but what are they really? And how are they any different? Their DNA is exactly the same. And then Several years ago, I was very fortunate to visit the ancient site of Tikal in Guatemala. Now I was there for a couple of days and I walked around the forest quite a bit. Once I got away from the center of Tikal, the ancient site of Tikal, I saw quite a few pyramids that were buried under the roots of the trees and the trees growing all over the pyramid. Then I would walk a few yards and I would find another pyramid covered waiting to be excavated and then another one and another one and another one. And this is the same site, I have the same feeling here. You find a pyramid, you go on top of it, you look next to it, you find another one in a different condition and almost destroyed and then another one, another one. Who knows how many pyramids are here? This is an absolutely spectacular site. What makes it spectacular is how old it is, the significance of this place, and also that it is in the South Pacific.